Good afternoon. Um, before I take questions, uh, I just want to call uh, your attention to, uh, obviously you all have, uh, have seen the news today that uh, GM is paying back 4.7 of the $6.7 billion loaned via TARP to it. Uh, the White House has issued a report uh, that should be, uh, if you don't have it, whoop, it'll be out momentarily. Uh, I just want to call to a few, some of the highlights uh, of the of the report that looks back at uh, the decision that the administration made uh, relating to the American auto industry about a year ago. Uh, some highlights, in the 12 months before uh, the president took office, the auto industry lost nearly 40 percent of its sales volume uh, and over 40, uh, I'm sorry, lost over 400,000 jobs. Today, employment in the auto industry has stabilized. Since GM exited bankruptcy in early July 2009, uh, the industry has added uh, 45,000 jobs. Uh, the president undertook uh, the decision to loan money uh, to GM and Chrysler uh, for several reasons, not the least of which was the economic impact of uh, of their bankruptcy, estimated by the former Treasury Department to be as many as 1.1 uh, million jobs. Some economists uh, had uh, assumed that it could be on the order of magnitude of 2.5 to 3 million jobs lost in both direct auto jobs uh, as well as uh, spin-off part supplier jobs uh, that could have been affected. As you know, the President uh, also insisted on um, that for those loans, uh, a restructuring of past bad company decisions uh, uh, had to be uh, reconciled. Um, the good news about today's announcement from General Motors uh, is that it is repaying its loan five years ahead of schedule, um, which uh, obviously uh, we're not out of the woods, but uh, I think demonstrates the path uh, that General Motors is on. Chrysler announced uh, its uh, earnings today, and uh, despite losing money at, from the time that it exited uh, bankruptcy last year to the end of the year, lost money, part of which was a one-time restructuring charge. Uh, it achieved an operating profit in the first quarter of 2010, the first uh, quarterly operating profit since the beginning of the economic crisis. Um, again, uh, and I would say one other thing that uh, the Treasury Department's program uh, on lending facilities uh, freed up uh, the credit market uh, as it related to auto loans last year. At a, we all remember back to a point in which uh, even, even individuals with good credit couldn't find the ability to uh, to get an auto loan. So uh, I would say all of those things uh, are highlighted in the report. The last thing, uh, 12 months ago, uh, auto sales were at their lowest point since 1970. Uh, average annualized sales in the first quarter of 2009 were approximately 9.5 million units. Today, U.S. sales have begun to rebound with annualized sales of 11.8 million vehicles in March. Analysts are currently forecasting uh, 2010 sales to be 11 and a half to 12 uh, million units. So uh, again, you all uh, should in your inboxes have that report. If not, it will be in there uh, uh, momentarily. Can I ask you about that? Sure. Are you making the announcement on the GM in order to make the case that the administration believes sometimes government bailouts are worthwhile? Uh, I, I'm, I'm making the case that the that uh, looking back almost a year later from the president making a very difficult and unpopular decision uh, to loan money to GM and Chrysler in order to go through a structured bankruptcy uh, and save one to three million jobs. Uh, I, think, um, I think we could all agree that the depth of our economic downturn would hardly have been helped uh, with those million or so people additionally out of work. Um, I think the way that 
um, the process was managed. Again, allowed, this was not a, this was not a loan to continue the type of practices that had led the comp each of the two companies to the brink of bankruptcy. It was a loan in order for them to begin to make the tough business decisions in order to restructure for uh, a new time. Uh, that's, what they, that's what they've begun to do. I, I, I restate again, we're, we're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. We have seen improvement. Uh, I think it is, uh, um, it's testament to a lot of people's hard work uh, and uh, uh, should, be, uh, should be noticed. Yes, ma'am. Um, after the meeting on the Supreme Court, Senator Leahy had some criticism of the court saying that it's very partisan, activist, uh, doesn't reflect the American people. He said that he hopes that the president's nominee will help change that. I'm wondering if the president agrees with Senator Leahy's criticism and in picking the nomination, is that something that he has in mind? Well, I, uh, I think you've heard the president talk about what he's going to look for. Uh, in a nominee, I, I have not spoken to uh, the president since the meeting. Uh, since the meeting broke up, uh, again, I, I, I think you get a sense of uh, he is looking for some uh, uh, somebody who uh, has a fidelity to the law, who is somebody who is independent, and somebody who um, uh, you know has the legal stature. Uh, necessary. I think all of those things the president will, uh, as he said over the next coming weeks, look for uh, and announce in a nominee. But does he agree with what Senator Leahy said I, that I the current a, court is partisan, doesn't I, I reflect have, the American people? I, I've not had a chance to speak with him about uh, about what, if Senator Leahy brought that up in the meeting or uh, if he mentioned it. Senator yes. Leahy has talked about what he sees as the merits of appointing somebody outside the judicial monastery. What does the president think of that? President Clinton also talked about that too. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I think it is, uh, uh, I think the president uh, uh, has mentioned uh, both in, in this, uh, as we look for a nominee now and as we look for a nominee last year, somebody who uh, understands how the law affects uh, real people in the real world. Um, not just uh, in a classroom, not just at a school. Uh, I think, as was true last time, there are people that will be on this list, uh, some, that, uh, some that are judges, some that are not or have been but are not currently judges. I think the president will get an opportunity to look through and select from a, a broad diversity of experience. Uh, again, I think that's what one of the things that... Uh, Justice Sotomayor brought was somebody that had uh, worked in the law at many different avenues, both as a uh, somebody who had, as a prosecutor, uh, as a judge, as an advocate, uh, and provided a, a, a broad swath of different experience. Does he think that a politician could maybe reflect the real world experiences better than a judge, or is he? Is he uh, again, I, I, I don't think I've heard him weigh. Uh, one versus the other. I think he, he understands the uh, uh, the desire, and, and the, certainly the team understands the desire to have a uh, a broad a broad group of uh, of of qualified and, and talented individuals from which he can select uh, his nominee. And separately, can you preview the Cooper Union speech at all? And also, can you say who's going to be there in the audience? Yeah, I will check on the audience stuff uh, after this. Uh, I know there were some uh, some emails on that that I haven't had a chance to uh, to look through. I, the president has uh, has gone to New York several times to speak on financial reform, twice during the campaign. Um, we are obviously entering a critical period of time. The House has passed financial reform and the Senate is on uh, the cusp, we hope, of both taking up and moving forward uh, on changing the rules of the road for, uh, for how banks and our financial system operate. So I think he will tomorrow remind the American people what's at stake, uh, what's important in, uh, in financial reform. and, and uh, I know sometimes it can feel, some of these issues can feel, in, 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 as the president goes to New York, it can feel disconnected from the rest of the country. But obviously financial reform uh, is something that um, 
is born out of an economic collapse that started on Wall Street and spread uh, to uh, Main Street America very quickly. So I think the President will remind the American people and the Senate what we all have at stake as we move forward uh, and hopefully get something uh, passed out of the Senate and quickly to his desk so that, uh, as I've said here many times before, uh, we, we, when we get to the second anniversary of the, the economic collapse, uh, we do so with new rules uh, governing how our financial system operates. Jeff. Robert, on that point about the President going to Wall Street, what can we expect in terms of his tone? He, various times he's said, if they want to fight, I'm ready for a fight. He's called bankers fat cats, but other times he said, you know, there needs to be a balance and you need to not, you know, um, hurt private enterprise, basically. And, and he'd well, I be think careful. The so. Yeah, I mean, look, I think the president, I, I, I don't think that, I don't think calling out uh, obscene bonuses, but also saying that we don't want to uh, overly or unduly burden private enterprise and uh, and American business from operating, I, I think, quite frankly, financial reform, uh, I, I think that is quite complementary to financial reform. I think there are a number of people, not the least of which are hundreds of millions of Americans who have played by the rules, uh, even as the economy has collapsed around them. Uh, so I, I think that the president will, uh, I mean, you've heard the president over the past not only a couple of weeks, but over the last few years, discuss uh, the notion that the reason why we have to have strong rules in place, uh, that those rules are, are for the benefit of the American people, uh, that we are not incentivizing a set of risky decisions where uh, banks reap all the reward, yet none of the responsibility for the decisions that they make. Um, but the, the president is a strong believer that our financial system uh, is part of a larger uh, system of commerce that we all treasure. We all we just have to have rules in the road, rules for the road in place, so that uh, we don't find ourselves at the mercy of a series of risky decisions as we have in the past. Another quick thing on taxes. Um, uh, recently, Paul Volcker, one of the president's leading economic advisors, suggested that the VAT tax is not such a bad idea that maybe the president should take a look at it. And yesterday, Austin Goolsby was asked about this on a program repeatedly about whether the president would consider a VAT tax, and he didn't really directly answer whether well, it's all. Well, I, I think I directly answered this the other day by saying that it uh, wasn't something that the president had under consideration. It's, it's, the Debt Commission is clearly looking at this and many other things. Well, we're going to let the, the Debt Commission, I think, meets later in the month. The president will open uh, by speaking to them, and we look forward to uh, uh, to their recommendations. So that tax would affect people making less than 250000 well, a year, wouldn't it? Uh, and, and the, the Deficit Commission is, uh, is going to be, is, as you know, comprised of Democrats and Republicans that will come forward with uh, bipartisan recommendations, and uh, the President looks forward to those recommendations. Jay. I can take another crack at Karen's question. Is it important to President Obama that there be somebody on the court who's not from the ju judiciary, somebody who has experience? Well, again, I, 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 you know, Jake, the president will make uh, a decision on whom that nominee, whom that next nominee will be. Uh, I, I think that, uh, again, the reason I use the Sotomayor example is somebody who both had judicial experience but also had legal experience uh, outside of uh, simply rendering judgment uh, on different cases. Again, I, I don't, the president is somewhat early in this process, and I don't know that, uh, I don't, obviously he's not made a final decision uh, on where that, uh, where that all comes down, except I think that it is important that for the president that, uh, that a nominee have a diversity of, of legal experience, not just, uh, uh, not just as a judge, but uh, in different venues. Um, on financial regulatory reforms, would the bill being considered in the Senate or the one that passed the House, would either of them have prevented the alleged fraud uh, that the SEC is currently suing Goldman over? Uh, I, I would, I would uh, direct you to the SEC in, in where they figure uh, and where they've decided their case is. I, I, think, I think not the least of which, uh, broader, in, in broader terms of financial reform, Let's take the issue that uh, the president has talked about in terms of derivatives. Bringing that type of activity out of the shadows 
uh, into an exchange, something that's monitored and regulated. Uh, look, I, I think in many ways, um, uh, as as these are complicated, as the financial system is has a series of very complicated instruments, uh, in many ways reform uh, is simple in the premise of um, having it brought out of uh, the dark and into the light, having that measure of, uh, of transparency and regulation as a fairly simple concept uh, in moving important reforms forward. So I, I don't doubt that there are uh, a host of things uh, in the legislation that uh, um, that that would have would have changed people's behavior from several years ago. Do you does the administration have an opinion on those in Wall Street who say that uh, these this action you're proposing with derivatives would cost them hundreds of millions, if not a billion dollars, uh, to to take those steps? Well, look again. I, I think that the the we have to figure out a way, and the president believes that bringing activities like this out of the dark and into, uh, into an exchange that's regulated uh, is a common sense step that prevents uh, the potential for a set of risky decisions to be made that, uh, that no one but taxpayers bear responsibility for. I think that is, that's what animates the president's decision making on this, and I think it will animate the Senate's decision making on passing financial reform. Yeah, Goldman Sachs has been very kind to Democrats over the years. Have you heard the president or anybody else uh, in, the, in the White House express concern that by going after Goldman, the administration is, uh, is uh, risking <coughs> losing political contributions, not just from them, but from other Wall Street firms with the tone of the president? Not at all. There's never been any connection whatsoever. No, no discussion I, about I, it at all. Chip, we, uh, the president visited Wall Street in uh, the middle of September of 2007 when uh, some thought we were on the midst we were in the midst of something calamitous about our economy and spoke pretty fervently about uh, uh, the need to uh, change the direction of our regulation he visited wall street again in uh, march of 2008 and has had uh, much to say about uh, wall street between now and then i think he's taken a, a, a again a pretty tough stance on behalf of taxpayers uh, as it relates to ensuring that uh, uh, risk is uh, risk is not put ahead of common sense. And you've never heard anybody on the uh, fundraising team, for example, uh, argue for toning it down a bit. No. Okay. On, following up on Ed's question on the fact, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like Mr. Goolsby and you are both leaving the door open to the possibility of a VAT down the road. How so? After the commission reports. Well, I get we we. we I, it's a great Washington thing to not say something which means something else. I, I, I'm not prejudging anything the commission does. I, I think it would, to get into the hypothetical of prejudging a commission which is yet to have its first uh, uh, meeting uh, is, uh, is a, a sort of a silly thing to do. Okay. You're, but you're not ruling it out. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, so on the Supreme Court, can yeah. we, uh, when people talk about the judicial monastery or whatever expression they want to use, they're not just That was talking. Karen's term. Yeah, no. well, it's actually, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, ladies. It's ladies' term, actually. And, and various other people, too. But but I think we all know what it means. It's you don't want somebody with limited real-world experience. And, and people have defined that to mean either being a judge or being a law professor. So can we assume that if the president wants somebody with real-world experience, anybody who has spent his entire career as a law professor or a judge is not going to make the list? Well, I, I, again, I, the, we're in the process of providing the president with extensive information uh, on a number of uh, individuals that uh, uh, I think he will find highly qualified uh, to serve on the Supreme Court. Uh, they will have a diversity of experience. Uh, I think there are, uh, again, I go back to the Sotomayor example, as somebody who held positions uh, in different uh, types of employment in, in, uh, in, in many different legal avenues. Uh, I think the president uh, uh, wants uh, somebody who understands, uh, as we said in the, uh, in the first uh, instance, that uh, understands how uh, law and decisions affect uh, uh, people that live in the real world. Has the president started vetting and talking to potential nominees at he this has. point? 
Can you give us any uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. any <laughs> No, except to say that he it. has. Uh, uh, well, he's uh, he's working on a lot of different things, but uh, obviously this is uh, this is one of the main priorities. I just said when asked about the issue of abortion that he wants somebody who's interpreting our Constitution in a way that takes into, it individual, into account individual rights and that includes women's rights. Isn't it artifice to say that this is not a litmus test? No. So he'd be open, for example, to choosing somebody who didn't believe we're, in we're, I think we're playing the Washington choose. game again. If I say this, then I don't. If I, do, no, 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 I, I know. I know. But I, I think it's a fair no, question. I mean, I, you're, it, no, I think, here's the question. I think the fair would response is, to, I think the fair response is, uh, that uh, the president, as you heard him enumerate, is going to look for somebody uh, that uh, that shares the notion of uh, legal principles that are enshrined in uh, in case law and in the Constitution. Uh, I think this is uh, again the president has some familiarity with cons the Constitution and constitutional law, and I think uh, uh, he can. Uh, 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 while not having an explicit litmus test, can talk to somebody about uh, a full range of their beliefs. But if he rules out somebody who doesn't share that belief, isn't that de facto a litmus test? Uh, I, I, again, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not going to get into the if this, does it mean that? If that, does it mean this? Uh, I, I would go with what the president said in terms of uh, understanding the legal principles of our Constitution. Okay, and in terms of the list, I think last week you all were saying that it, the list was expanding. Mm -hmm. Is it now contracting? No, I don't, I, I, don't uh, uh, I, I, I would still consider the process not at one that's winnowing. Uh, uh, part of it is the, the team is uh, in the process of getting information uh, to the president on a, a series of, uh, uh, on a series of uh, potential nominees. Uh, that he can uh, look more deeply at. Um, if it turned out that the person he appoints to the court someday provided the fifth vote to overturn Roe versus Wade, would Barack Obama be upset about that? <laughs> I think we've just. Uh, it's a, it's, I'm just it's a legitimate a twenty plus year hypothetical, and I, I just I. I well, it would be a two year hypothetical. And uh, one year. I, I will uh, I will uh, not wanting to get into hypotheticals not just not getting into 730-day hypotheticals. I will, uh, again, I, 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 I would point you to what the president said uh, in, in what he's uh, looking for in the nominee. Do the, um, when he goes to West Virginia, is he going to be there simply as a mourner, or will he also be talking about accountability of the mine companies? Um, the president, as you heard last week uh, in speaking to uh, our mine safety folks, the Secretary of Labor, uh, has asked for a, a full investigation uh, of what happened. Uh, obviously, there are other uh, agencies in the government that will deal with uh, accountability as to what that investigation shows. I think what the President hopes uh, this weekend, though, is to go um, and celebrate the lives uh, of those that were lost. Uh, I, I, uh, I would not expect that the president would use the opportunity uh, to outline a series of, uh, of policy proposals. Uh, obviously, the administration is working through that investigation and working through uh, different aspects of, uh, uh, of mine safety proposals, but the, I don't expect that he'll outline them there. I think he f would f he'll find it more appropriate to be uh, uh, mourning the lives of those lost uh, than, than getting into uh, uh, policy solutions. Again, not to say that that's not ultimately important. That's why he asked for the investigation uh, and something he'll come back to. You won't be slapping anybody's wrists or, or saying anything negative about the companies. Uh, again, I, I, our focus will be on the, the okay. celebrating the lives of those that uh, uh, tragically lost their lives. Robert, I'm not sure about the um, outside the judicial monastery phrase, does that mean the president would not consider a non-lawyer for the high court? Uh, I, I, you ever discussed that with I have not. Uh, Could you? Uh, <laughs> Mark, if, if, I'm is, not a lawyer. If this is just another attempt to get your name in the stack. I think I, I've tried to tell you a few times. Bob's tried no, to tell you. It's just not. No, I know. Yeah, no. It's uh, 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 All of us hold out hope that uh, 
a non-lawyer might. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, so I, I will. Uh, I, I've not talked to him about that, but I'll. Uh, I can certainly pose it. And on the uh, bailout question, is it accurate the president would not forswear the use of bailouts in the future? Well, uh, the president wants to put in in, in into uh, into our law uh, a series of regulations that. Uh, that he believes will prevent having to do that. Uh, rules of the road that um, require people to change in their behavior and, and, uh, and because of that act differently, not put taxpayers at risk. Um, I think that's the goal of uh, the strong goal of financial reform and that's what the, the president would like to see the Senate pass. Right. Um, back to the speech in New York uh, tomorrow, uh, I want to take another crack at the tone uh, is he is he going to have uh, a speech that's uh, sort of like the radio address last Saturday? It was pretty rough, or is it going to be a little bit more conciliatory? What, what, what exactly? Look, I, I mean, I, I think the I mean, I think you've heard the president now for a, a number of weeks, and quite frankly, a number of years, talk about why we need uh, strong reform, why the actions of some led us into uh, an economic calamity that all have had to deal with. As I said. Uh, something that started on Main Street and is, and or, I'm, I'm sorry, started on Wall Street and spread uh, throughout Main Street all over this country. Uh, so look, I, I don't, you, I don't think you can talk about financial reform without talking about bad actions that have happened in the past. And uh, call off the lobbyists, for example. I, 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 it's a safe bet that the the, lo the lobbyists will be mentioned as part of, uh, as as part of this. Again, I think. Uh, um, You've, you've heard the president mention that before. This is, uh, uh, the president has mentioned this directly to those uh, in the financial industry. Uh, I happen to think, and I think the president shares this optimism, that we've made over the course of the, just the last few days some good progress in, uh, in ensuring that we'll have bipartisan support for, uh, for this legislation. I think the way Senator Dodd has continued to um, to talk with Senator Shelby, Senator Corker, and others. Secretary Geithner has met with uh, many Republicans. Uh, Larry Summers has met with many Republicans uh, in order to continue um, uh, trying to find a solution to this. I think clearly uh, some Republican opposition has been, uh, has been overcome. Um, and speaking of Dodd, he said this morning, as you intimated, that there's He's, in his words, there was an awful lot of Republicans who are willing to come on board, mm -hmm. provided the leadership lets him do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he's speaking, in all honesty, not to put words in his mouth. I think he's speaking from the experience of having dealt with a senator before that senator got pulled back, dealing with another senator before that senator got pulled back, having the first senator coming. I, I mean, I, I think there is. Um, I certainly believe within the Republican. Uh, caucus in the Senate, there is a desire to get this done. Whether that desire goes to the top, it certainly, it appeared to go closer to the top yesterday than it certainly has in the past several weeks, and maybe that's a good sign that um, uh, that more people are understanding uh, of what the President has spoken about for so long and that, that we have to get some tough rules in place. Does the president uh, feel he's at the point where he uh, should be making phone calls up there to reinforce things or, or are you not at that point? Or well, I, I, I think we've made, I think, uh, I think we've made good progress in the past week. Obviously, Secretary Geithner and Dr. Summers have, ha have been very involved in this on behalf of the administration. Will he be making calls? Uh, the president? I, at some point, I, I, I don't doubt he will, sure. Yes. A couple months ago at NYU, uh, John Brennan said that post 9-11 American Muslims have been subjected to excessive surveillance, uh, overly broad no-fly lists, uh, the government's been unhelpful to Muslim charities. Does the President agree with this? Uh, well, John Brennan uh, uh, works for the President and uh, I, I don't recall the uh, exact lines in your speech, uh, uh, but the President uh, uh, has great confidence in John Brennan. I ask about his relationship with the American Muslim community. He has been very... John's or the president? The president. Okay. Uh, he's been uh, uh, very much out front in dealing with Muslims abroad. Uh, there's some question about whether or not uh, he has been quite so visible in dealing with American Muslims. Do the complaints of 
birthers and other folks uh, 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 <laughs> complicate the president's dealing with the American. I have to say, you, uh, I got to give you credit, Wendell, for getting a lot of crazy people in one question. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, I hope you're not including me as one of the <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I, but you artfully got in a lot of uh, uh, internet complaints about the president in, uh, in, 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 in one... Uh, not to give credence to the arguments, I wonder if it complicates the president's <laughs> yeah. outreach politically. No, I, we have... <laughs> the president has dealt with uh, the crazy internet rumors for, um, for years. Uh, I don't think that's deterred... Uh, uh, anything that he's done in, in understanding what the right thing is to do uh, for this country and uh, to broaden our relationship uh, uh, with uh, uh, with Muslims throughout the world. Uh, I, you know, again, the, <laughs> I've said this many times. When I, I, if you're uh, if after I asked that the president's birth certificate be put on the internet hasn't dissuaded you from where he was being born, I, 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 I'm almost positive that, uh, that no argument is somehow going to dissuade you from that. Uh, I, I don't, I, I got to tell you, I don't, it, 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 we don't spend a lot of time here uh, worrying about uh, what to do about uh, people that don't think the president was born here. I, I don't, I, I, again, I'm the guy who said put the birth certificate on the internet. It is apparently among those people dissuaded virtually none of them. And on the debt commission, <laughs> it's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you are, uh, whoo, you're all over the map today, Wendell. So I, you are, I know. Probably. It's understandable you don't want to tie the debt commission's hands by ruling out things like a, 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 a VAT or a, a tax increase. Uh, the president has said he wants them to consider all the, uh, the possible, possible ways of dealing with with the nation's debt. But isn't it the purpose of a commission to come up with the suggestions that are politically uh, difficult for the president and members of Congress to deal with on their own? Well, again, again to, in order for a recommendation to come forward that has to be voted on by Congress, you're going to have to have bipartisan support for those recommendations. Look, I, I, I think some of the reason that we're in the fiscal trouble that we're in now uh, is uh, um, is uh, you, you're not going to have to you're not going to make uh, tough decisions as the president has already had to in terms of freezing non-security uh, spending over the course of the next three years uh, without getting uh, bipartisan support. Again, <clears throat> we can for the life of the commission play. If you don't rule this out, does that you mean you rule this in on uh, virtually every line in the budget from uh, again from here until sometime in December? I think the president believes, uh, and I, I think members of Congress must have believed as well, that this was a worthwhile activity because they nominated uh, many of their own to participate in this activity. Uh, I think we all realize that the type of uh, debt that has been run up over the past many years is, uh, is simply not sustainable. Uh, following up on Savannah's question, looking at what the president actually said, I want somebody who's going to be interpreting our Constitution to take into account women's rights. How is that not the dictionary definition of a litmus test? I don't know what the dictionary definition of a litmus well, test is. A, how is that not a litmus test? Uh, I, I, I think a litmus test is when you say, uh, Anne, uh, uh, will you, uh, you ask a direct question about uh, 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 do you believe this? Do you believe that? I think the president will uh, ask any nominee to uh, uh, to s discuss how they view the Constitution and the legal principles enshrined in it. Can I ask, um, yeah. why has the president not gone to an American mosque? President Bush did. What, what reason then has he not done that in his time in office? I uh, I I can talk to scheduling. I, I don't know the answer to that. A priority? Uh, I, you know, look, I. I I don't doubt that uh, our continued outreach, uh, both uh, here and abroad, is, uh, uh, is, as the President said, quite important. Can I ask on the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. uh, uh, does the President want a nominee uh, with empathy? Uh, again, I think the President, he wants, the President wants somebody who understands how uh, the decisions that a court makes affects real people in the real world. Would you I don't know that if that's the dictionary definition of empathy, but uh, I'd point you to Anne. 
I, 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 uh, I would just go with what I said. Uh, I don't know whether uh, uh, all of that meets the test of uh, the definition of a certain word. Do we avoid that word now after last year? I mean, that word was yeah. prominent. Well, if you, if you just asked me if you thought that what I said was that word, and I, I clearly didn't shy away from the definition. So, uh, Robert, just Robert, to follow following, yeah. following up on that, do, do, does uh, gender or race have any part balancing a court have any part in his thinking uh, I, 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 I think the president will look at uh, 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 will look at men and women I think among the nominees uh, potential nominees uh, I think uh, he will look at uh, 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 whites African Americans Hispanics uh, I think the I think it's safe to say I don't know what the how the what the president obviously will make in terms of a final decision uh, but I think he will have a, uh, a broad group of people uh, that represent uh, uh, many, uh, uh, that represent America as, uh, as a way of looking at that nominee. Would, would, would I have not asked him specifically about that this time. Real quickly on yeah. Goldman Sachs, has anyone inside the White House suggested that the Obama campaign might want to give back any donations that came from Goldman Sachs personnel? Uh, I, I've not heard that. Again, you know, um, the president, uh, president doesn't take and didn't in the campaign take PAC money, doesn't take money from registered federal lobbyists. Uh, and I think anybody that contributed to the campaign at any point uh, knew where the president stood on uh, regulating Wall Street and regulating the financial industry. From, again, that first speech on Wall Street in 2007, uh, the second speech in March of 2008 in the same venue we're going to go to, and then uh, in, anybody that watched the campaign from sort of mid-September on, obviously uh, the focus was on uh, what to do on Wall Street. Yes, sir. Um, the Senate seems to be moving more quickly on President Obama's nominees. Last night, a few who had been around for a long time were confirmed. Is there a sense that there's a new chapter beginning, and is there a fear that a Supreme Court confirmation could undo the progress? I, I will say this. I think that the last two times the bipartisan uh, leadership has met with the president, the president has brought up the speed at which his nominees uh, uh, have been considered and mentioned on, on, as I have on several occasions, the notion that uh, uh, there appear to be uh, purposeful delaying tactics, um, largely to slow down whatever the Senate is working on. Uh, for the express purpose, for that express purpose, rather than anything that has to do ideologically or uh, or in any way with uh, with the nominee, uh, he brought that up specifically with Senator McConnell at the last meeting. Uh, mentioned the extent to which uh, we had nominees that had cleared the committee and were on the calendar to be dealt with that uh, that still had to go through a cloture process. Um, so I think that clearly progress is being made. Uh, in the Senate on getting some of those considered and voted on. Uh, I think, the, as the President mentioned at the beginning of uh, the pool spray just a, a few, uh, uh, just a little while ago, which was we were actually at a point in the process. Um, Justice Stevens signaled his intention to leave the court several weeks before um, Justice Souter had the year earlier. We're ahead of that process. I think you heard the President say, uh, uh, We've got, that gives you a few more weeks uh, and still be able to get something done uh, before the Senate leaves town for the August recess. And we expect, uh, we, we, we expect that that uh, is a timeline that uh, can and will be met. Yes, ma'am. Robert, why is the President expanding his list of candidates at this point? Uh, to get uh, a broad uh, group of and, and look at different uh, potential nominees. Is he not happy with the list he's got? No, I, I don't. Uh, uh, again, Chris, we're, we're fairly early in this process. Uh, and uh, I, I think the, the team here wants to provide the president with uh, as many options as, uh, as is possible. And, and uh, that's what they're doing. Do you just think it's fun? Does he like to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, I've seen some of the briefing memos. I don't, I'm not sure I would consider all of that fun. But uh, uh, even, you know, I, I can firmly say that's not what he had in mind in terms and of fun. Can I just ask you this? Mm -hmm. Were there actual names discussed today in the meeting with uh, the I, 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 I will get a readout from, uh, from those that were in the, in the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Thanks. Uh, Robert, in terms of tomorrow's speech, how much will President Obama focus specifically on derivatives, the notion of regulating derivatives in that speech? We've heard it may be a focus, the focus. Um, will he detail specific policy well, on derivatives? And, and I have one quick Well, Margaret, question. I would say this. Going back to the white paper that the administration released in, I think, June of last year, we had some very specific recommendations for um, bringing out of the dark and, and regulating, uh, regulating uh, uh, derivatives. Uh, it is an aspect of something that the president will talk about. I, I do not anticipate that it is the focus of the speech. And then um, the, the Republicans seem to be suggesting that the White House is uh, pretty deeply involved in, um, in shaping how the derivatives legislation would come to the floor, either in terms of the Lincoln Bill or in terms of right. the floor bill. Um, how much is the White House driving the train in terms of the derivatives legislation, and how much is the president still at this point letting what happens happen? Well, um, look, we, we have, uh, again, I think, as I said a couple days ago, I think many in the industry believe that Senator Lincoln was, was going to introduce, or maybe hoped Senator Lincoln was going to introduce a bill uh, that, uh, that wasn't strong on derivatives. Obviously, that was uh, not the case. There's overlap in the proposals that the administration made in its white paper uh, that Senator Link are also contained in Senator Lincoln's bill. Uh, they're going to, the Senator Lincoln's bill, I believe, passed out of committee just as I was uh, making my way down here. Uh, and the administration will continue to work with Senator Reid, Senator Dodd, uh, Republicans, uh, and others uh, in ensuring that whatever gets out of the Senate. Uh, is uh, is very strong on derivatives. Today has what a, a hands-off approach, or have you been very deeply involved? Um, in let, let me speak. Uh, let me speak to Secretary Geithner about that. I know that uh, uh, they. I think Senator Lincoln has obviously shared uh, proposals. We've looked at uh, their proposals, and uh, as I said, there's there's uh, commonality, uh, and there's some things that we uh, also would like to see. Uh, contained in that legislation. Yes, sir. Robert, is the apparent progress that the White House is making uh, winning or potentially winning over Republicans on the mm -hmm. financial legislation a sign that, do you believe, that a sign that the Republicans are coming over based on merit or based on their political position, based on the politics of the bill? Um, uh, merit based. Republican votes, if yeah. indeed you are, based on the merits of the legislation, yeah. or is there also, do you believe, a political calculation that Republicans are making on well, this based on? Well, I would say this. I think that um, uh, I, I think that from a pure policy perspective, we've got uh, Senator Dodd has, and we have uh, worked with him on ensuring uh, a, a piece of legislation that uh, that. <coughs> that puts those strong rules into place. Uh, I think there is much merit in the bill, obviously. Uh, I, I don't doubt, uh, to be perfectly candid with you, that Republicans have realized for going on a week that they were um, in a politically difficult position uh, after a, a Wall Street meeting uh, and, uh, uh, and a speech that seemed to read right out of a memo written a year ago, April. Uh, questions on two different topics. One, how many candidates or potentials has the president vetted so far? Has he vetted so far? Um, several. Thank you. I want to define. <laughs> I want. I want a specific quantified number, please. Uh, more than a couple. <laughs> that means more than two. Well, several generally does, but I, I, I'm not going to look. I. I, I, I you're getting better at the uh, at uh, at the uh, at the ability to pry uh, information. I'm not going it's to give. <laughs> I understand. Uh, again, I, I I will say this. I do believe the uh, uh, I do believe we are earlier in the process. Again, just from a sheer the sheer standpoint of what what has been on the president's schedule. Uh, as I've said this before, there's there's no doubt the president has had an opportunity as a result of people that participated and went through this process last time, that we have uh, more information on. Uh, that's not to say, though, that uh, there aren't a series of individuals and potential nominees uh, 
that the team is uh, is assembling more on for the president to look. So since he's uh, talked, he's vetted personally vetted at least two. Are some of those that he's vetted minorities? Uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm I think I've probably given up all I should give up for today, uh, right. lest we uh, blow through all the questions for the remainder of the term. And on the second, <laughs> on, the, on the second topic, not likely. <laughs> I, I was trying. <laughs> Yes, topic on black farmers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of contradiction between uh, one end of Pennsylvania Avenue and here and the black farmers themselves. Uh, one, the black farmers want to meet specifically with the president. Uh, they're saying that they don't feel that there is um, enough commitment from this White House because the bill, I mean, the monies have not been attached to anything on the Hill. And then the Hill is saying that um, it, it was not made an emergency issue. Uh, from the White House was not deemed emergent, an emergent mm -hmm. issue for them to act on quickly. Mm -hmm. So what is happening? Well, uh, I know that uh, I know the representatives met with administration officials uh, last week. Well, I'll get you more information on on Why who and who. Right, right. Uh, uh, and I, you know, April, I just continue to say that uh, this is an issue that uh, that uh, that folks uh, very high up in the administration continue to be. Uh, focused on and, and working on, and we're uh, working towards uh, a solution uh, that would uh, keep the commitment that the president made. So, are you looking to find ways to attach that 1.25 billion dollars to something on the? Well, again, there's 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 a uh, there's a you know uh, both uh, uh, there's legislative and there's uh, 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 financing uh, decisions that uh, that are being looked through. What was the, uh, could you tell us, what was the impetus behind the president's call to Senator Brown, uh, I believe it was yesterday, and, and a related topic, what was the president's view of the legislation now pending before the Arizona governor on immigration? Uh, let, let me get some, uh, some background on the, the immigration one, and I'll, I'll get that out to everybody. Uh, on, the president made a series of phone calls yesterday uh, from the plane, including uh, to Senator Brown. Uh, about the issue of immigration, uh, a commitment that the president had made uh, in meeting with uh, immigration reform advocates and uh, uh, and with Senator Schumer and Graham that are working on legislation uh, that he would uh, he would spend some time uh, talking with uh, Republicans to gauge uh, their desire to participate in uh, the process of finding uh, a comprehensive. Uh, immigration reform solution and uh, uh, to talk through the timetables of when that can happen. And which senators did you call? Uh, I don't have the list with me, but I can uh, I can try to find. Uh, I, I've got that in uh, in my email back there. I will say this that uh, hold on. A second. The uh, I will say this. Obviously, that uh, uh, sen the the conversation with Senator Brown also included uh, some discussion. I don't have a download on uh, on on financial reform. I think that's something. Uh, I, I want to say I think that's something that Senator Brown brought up, but I will, uh, I will check. Are you, are you telling us you will tell us who the president called? Because sometimes you say you'll get back to us, but then when we chat, you <laughs> Do I do that? So that's I'm weird. Huh. Uh, I, will, uh, I will get you a list of those yeah, names. But let me go to Glenn and I'll go to Sarah. Robert, the White House Chief of Staff in a, in a TV interview uh, a couple of days ago mentioned that he might be interested in, in uh, running for the job of the mayor of Chicago. Do you think it's, it's a, a good gig? gig. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's generally a good idea for someone whose portfolio includes the entire country and has uh, a whole bunch of issues on his plate, or sort of nationwide issues, yeah. to talk about a preference for serving in a specific locality? Well, Glenn, I, I don't. In all honesty, uh, I'm not sure that uh, in that interview that the chief of staff said anything that uh, he hasn't said before. Uh, this obviously, look, he's. Uh, Chicago is is uh, is Rob's home. Uh, it is uh, it's a, a city that he uh, greatly loves, and uh, uh, I think it's something that uh, has certainly been uh, that something that he's discussed in the past. Uh, I think I would also point out that uh, he's a strong supporter of uh, of the current mayor and uh, is supporting uh, him for re-election. President would endorse him. Uh, <laughs> that's one of those 730-day hypotheticals that I'll uh, I'll steer away from. Sam, just sort of following up on the uh, phone call to Senator Brown. Yep. Um, can you give us a sense of because uh, the reports seem to convey that the president was set to start on immigration reform rather soon 
And yeah. you just mentioned that uh, he was gauging the interest of Republicans yeah. to participate. Can you give us a sense of the timing about where the White House stands in this? And yeah, I, I will say this. I, I think it was. Uh, I, I, did, I think I saw reports that that there was this notion that the, the Senate would take this up within the month or yeah. within a month. Uh, I, I obviously the president has uh, is very interested in this. Uh, has uh, been a supporter of comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, I don't, uh, the president made a commitment uh, to those working on the proposal uh, in the Senate to help find uh, additional support. Uh, but the, the president, uh, I'm not aware that the president enumerated a, 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 a we would go to this in a month uh, uh, timeline. Yeah. Senator Brown said oh. that the president told him the issue was moving forward, not necessarily for the Senate floor, but moving right. forward in a month. Is that well, accurate? I, I think that, well, I mean, look, Senator, uh, Senator Schumer and Senator Graham have, have been working on this for many months. Uh, but I, I don't, uh, so I, I think, quite frankly, so uh, it's, 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 it's moving to in. At this point? Uh, to, I think it's safe to assume that we're not going to get comprehensive immigration reform legislation uh, through the Senate on uh, uh, on a party line vote, uh, which means you gotta, you're going to have to have bipartisan support. And that's what, again, the president made a commitment uh, to Senators Shelby and Graham, uh, I'm sorry, Schumer and Graham to, uh, uh, to reach out to Republicans uh, and, uh, and did so. Carrie? Yeah. The, the president was heckled pretty persistently on Monday night about don't ask, don't tell repeal. Yeah. Six LGBT veterans uh, chained themselves to the White House gates yesterday. I think you actually even saw it. All of these I, actions. I was, I was walking through the park at that time. You were walking, just a yeah. casual walk through the park. Um, just were around. you pushed back by park police too? No, I was just, I'm just kidding. No. I will say, can I mention the park police? Yeah, I think sure. I think many people have seen, uh, and I think we were asked yesterday, the role in which the White House played in that. Uh, obviously, the, the park police has uh, rightly took responsibility for uh, some overzealous actions. They corrected those, albeit belatedly. Uh, the White House and the Secret Service uh, did not have any role in that decision making. Uh, and I think uh, it, the, the Park Police has, uh, uh, has taken, uh, rightly taken responsibility for that. Let me, let me get back to, uh, to, to the question. So the, there was the, you know, the heckling on Monday night. Right. There's the veterans yesterday at the White House gates. Uh, handcuffing themselves to the fence. All of these actions are, gained, are aimed at getting repeal this year, something the White House has sort of declined to commit to since the State of the Union address. Has the White House misjudged the level of, of patience among LGBT and grassroots act activists on this? No, I, again, I would, remind, uh, I would remind anybody on this issue. Look, first of all, I will say this, uh, obviously, the, the president made a commitment in the presidential campaign uh, and understands the, uh, the passion that, uh, that people hold the belief that uh, uh, all should be able to serve. The president holds that belief too. That, but I would remind folks that wasn't a belief that the president held in 2007. That's a belief that the president held uh, in running for the Senate as far back as 2003. Uh, so, Kerry, I, I, the president is, uh, uh, is, has made and is committed to making uh, this, uh, this change law. Uh, I, I don't think he's underestimated uh, the, um, as you said, the patience of, uh, of some. I, I, the president is, uh, the, the president wants to see this law uh, changed just as you've heard uh, the chair of the Joint Chiefs uh, and others uh, in the military say uh, that it's time for that change to happen. But he's committed to, he's committed to then letting the, the uh, uh, Pentagon work through its working group process until right. December 1st. Is that true? He's yes. Committed to we're, that. We're, I, uh, I think the president has set forward a process with the, joint, the chair of the Joint Chiefs and with the Secretary of Defense uh, to, uh, uh, to, work through, uh, to work through this issue. Before any legislative action is taken, that uh, rules out legislative action. Well, again, this year. I, I, you know, the, the, the House and the Senate uh, uh, are uh, are obviously a different branch of government. The, the president has a process and a proposal. I think that he believes uh, is uh, is the best way forward to uh, to seeing again the commitment that he's made for many years 
uh, enshrined into uh, changing that law. Thank you. Thanks, guys.